Hey everyone, welcome to another session of Conversations with, with Courageous Cancer Warriors. And I am so excited for today's guest. So Denise, Michelle, and I have been going back and forth for the past year. We've been colleagues and I am thrilled to have her in this conversation today. And it is so important to me because the topic that she is an expert in is something I feel we all need, especially as cancer warriors. You know, um, we have gone through this journey of just finding ourselves again and finding how to relove ourselves, fall back in love with ourselves again. And so she is a self-love expert and she's a many other things like a transformational life purpose coach. She's also a hypnotherapist. She is a best-selling author in our series, Women Who Boss Up. So Denise, we are thrilled to have you here and for this conversation. How are you today? I am great. Thank you, Lori, for having me. I'm so excited to be here. We are, I, I mean, I'm just so honored and I'm so excited. So tell us a little bit about your journey and how you became the self-love expert. Well, <laughs> I would say it started from birth. <laughs> um, I was actually born with a mental illness called borderline personality disorder. Um, and so for those who don't know what that is, it is basically uh, emotional dysregulation to the core. Um, I, I didn't really understand what healthy emotions were. And growing up, it was just kind of my, I think my parents, you know, they didn't, they didn't really understand what was going on within me, but it, they kind of like skirted the issue. Oh, she's in a mood. Oh, she's throwing a tantrum. But what it really was, was I was calling for love. And, um, and the thoughts turned into these very intense emotions where I would feel things from, you know, like anger, zero to 60. Um, I didn't know what happiness was. I didn't know what sadness was. I was always searching for love <laughs> and I would watch movies and, and see things in magazines or whatever, and just observe, oh, okay. So that's what love is. And so that would lead me into a life of not only um, creating a lot of accomplishments, but also a life of self-destruction. Um, and in my twenties, I began to unwind it. And that's when really about 20 years ago, my healing process totally started. You know, that resonates with me and I'm sure it's so many listening, you know, part of what happens is we go through this journey called life and things happen to us that we sometimes can't explain, you know, so most of the people listening have had some sort of chronic illness that they're dealing with. And, you know, there's some anger in that there's like, you know, the why me, the how can this happen to me, you know, and then you get to this point of acceptance. But I feel that also the self-love component takes such a long time to catch up, right? Like, for us in this cancer journey, and just for like yourself, I'm sure you, you, it's very, very similar for the fact that you go through the treatment process where you're just going through the motions, trying to get yourself to a point that you're well, and then people kind of disappear. There's like nobody there to really support you mm -hmm. unless you're a demand for it, right? Like the, the therapists go away, the social workers go away, the, no one is there. And if they are, most of the time they're trying to push medication on you. So I love this concept that you're using hypnotherapy, um, coaching, you know, your transformational life coach. I, I just, I absolutely love this. So tell us a little bit about how you work with clients. I know you do one-on-one, -on -one, but you also have courses available. I, we would love to hear a little bit more about that. Sure. Yeah. So, so basically I would say at this point, my clientele, um, are healers, spiritual entrepreneurs, and influencers. And, um, and I have, I have, I, I, I call them spiritual warriors, right? This is, this is not the, the path that you walk through easily. This is, you're walking through the fire and you're doing it on purpose. Um, because what's on the other side is your authentic self. Right. And, and it's not easy to get to our authentic self. It's not easy to, to stare our fate, you know, stare our, issues in the face and um, much less embrace them and accept them. Um, and at the same time, moving away from what we have considered victim consciousness into empowerment. Um, so it's, 
it's really interesting because I've studied, oh my gosh, I, I don't even know how many things at this point. Um, I'm certified in lots of different things. I mean, really all of this started when I became a yoga teacher um, well over a decade ago, but I, I've created something called hypno healing, which is basically just a culmination of everything that I've studied. And I, whatever whatever my clients, if I'm working one-on-one -on -one with my clients, everything is tailored to them. Um, but in, you know, when it comes to group settings, I basically throw in a lot of different tools and resources and modalities that can, people can pick and choose what works for them because, you know, one modality may not work for another person. Um, so it's, it's really that this is why I branded myself as a self-love alchemist, because it is, it's an alchemy. <laughs> it's like, you know, and if we look at like everything, you know, even what you do, right. It's, it's an alchemy of everything up to this moment. And you're like me, you're a lifelong learner. Yeah. Yeah. And so for those that are listening that are, you know, they may be at the beginning, they may be at the middle, they may be at kind of what we call the end, but really, is there really an end to this journey, right? There's just, I love the word transformation, right? You transform into somebody else and, and have a different focus. What would be the first thing or one thing that they can do to really embrace their situation and really start that self-love process? Yeah, I would, I would say the first thing that any one person could do would, would I mean, it's, it's, it's starting that acceptance process um, in knowing that we are not here to be perfect beings. We are perfectly imperfect as we are, and there is no manual to, to our human existence and our human experience. You know, we, the gifts, the magic is literally living inside of us. And it's a matter of being able to observe and notice when these difficult emotions and feelings and experiences come up, what is actually going on. It's, it's, it's coming face to face with yourself. That is the process of self-love is you have to start coming face to face with yourself and it, it stop the blame, stop the guilt, stop the shame, because that's not what this is about. This is a, a huge part of the, the self-love process is forgiveness, self-forgiveness, right? Yeah, it's those moments that keep you up at night, right? Like I know that I, as you're saying that there's this one moment in time that lately, the past two weeks had has just keep, it's a repeat in my brain. And it's that, you know, embarrassed, shame like why did I do that I you know bad and wrong conversation is is coming up for me and it's so true because and it's they sometimes hit years later right like I'm I'm reliving an experience from god six years ago right now in my brain that I just can't seem to get past so it's yeah. so important to have this conversation I mean I just I love what you're up to and you you said you had a course, you also do one-on-one, -on -one, which, and I love the name of, of that. It's the Be Your Magic, right? Yeah, that's, your yeah, magic that's my one-on-one -on -one course. Mm -hmm. which I love. Um, so tell us a little bit about, you know, what are you up to next? Like, what's your next? Well, I would say, actually, I would like to loop back to what you were just saying about your reoccurring yeah. Your re okay. the reoccurring thing that's coming up for you. Um, just something interesting, right? Because everything lives in our subconscious. Our subconscious is actually what's driving our lives, um, whether or not we realize that. So this is why I do so much deep subconscious work. I'm like, I even when I sleep, I'm listening to something on loop to help me reprogram my mind. Um, so what's fascinating is that whatever this, this situation was that was from six years ago, it is really possible too that you know and this is the the hypnotherapy work that I do that that when you really get down to the root cause of what that issue is whether you know let's say you're you're feeling guilt and shame about something that it was something that happened in your formative years that was the first real trigger and then it just built and developed over time and then once it actually developed then it formed into something and then that pattern just keeps showing up until you heal it. 
(laughs) So, yeah. So whatever it is that you're, you're going through there, you know, like whether it's you do journaling or, you know, you're working with a therapist, keep going deeper into that because eventually you will find out, oh my gosh, this is, this is what it was. This is the root cause of it. Yeah. And I loved what you said about the, um, the nobody's perfect, right? There's that book from Renee Brown, the gifts of imperfection. Like I keep reading that over and over again. My personality is definitely a perfectionist personality. And I think that I'm recovering. I hear you sister. Oh, (laughs) oh, it's exhausting. Right. And it's like, um, yeah, you know, part of the journey that we're on too, is that we want to No, you mentioned you're going to start your own podcast, which I'm really excited about. And we, I'm left in a space where it's just like, I want everybody to just know it's okay to have it be that it's not perfect, right? Like if I, if I go back and I sometimes listen to these episodes, I'm like, oh, why did I say this? Or why did they say that? So I've kind of learned to not re-listen to them for some time, right? And then I could see the joy of it. I could see the fun in it, the things that I'm trying to create in this moment with you. But my imperf- my my perfectionism really strips that away. So for those of you that are listening, I would love to have you take a look at where in your life are you having to be perfect? And that it's taking away the joy of the experience that you are having. So is it in your relationships? Is it at work? Like for me, work is a huge, you know, when I was a PA, like it had to be perfect because somebody's life depended on it. And that was a lot of pressure that we put on ourselves. So I would love to hear from you as the expert in self-love, like you've said to us the acceptance, like what would be something else that, you know, I can do the journaling, the meditating, the the therapy, right? All great things. Would there be one thing that people don't think about? Yeah, I would say what's coming to me really clearly actually is, is owning the choice. So, you know, one word that I heard you say was I'm trying, right? I, I do work on not saying that word too much because when I see the word trying, I don't necessarily see myself being in it 100% or, you know, that I'm owning my choice. So when I say the word I'm choosing, I'm taking ownership of the direction that I'm going. And by doing that, that empowers me. Right. And so instead of, you know, when it, when it comes to being a recovering perfectionist, because I do know how debilitating that is on our minds, our bodies, everything, you know, on our spirits that, that it's, it isn't about being perfect. I'm making, I'm making the choice that is right for me in this now moment. And I also have the freedom to choose a new choice, right? That, that nothing is permanent. Nothing is permanent that we can switch directions any time we want, doesn't matter how far and how deep we go in something, we can still choose to switch the direction. And this is where we start taking our power back. Yeah. And it's so inspirational for me because it's like so much of our lives has been dictated by our surroundings, our parents, our interactions, you know, the things that we did like about things, the things that we didn't like about things, like the choices that we made along the way. And ultimately, like, it's fine. It's the choice that you made, right? You know, for me, I chose to work a high stress job. And that high stress led 1000% to my illness, right? And I get that that was a choice. And that's definitely, like you said, a more powerful stand So I really appreciate that new outlook and that new insight, because if you, there's no freedom around it otherwise. No. And this is, this is about freedom, right? This is, this is about, that's why I talk about the authentic self so much. We cannot really live in our authentic selves when we're putting 
all of these constraints on herself. We're just, we're continuing, we're piling on the bricks and we we're you know, we're working to get out of that so we can open up our wings and fly and be free. And, you know, I mean, I'm not trying to get like crazy woo woo and just, you know, be like, yes, it's all rainbows and butterflies. When you get to the other side, it's, it's not, it's, it's a constant effort. It's a constant effort. And it's, you know, if, if, if we're really looking at the direction, this is why I, in, in my bio, like I write, like I lead a vision driven life because everything I do comes from something that I have already envisioned. That is what I'm working towards. We cannot set sail. Uh, well, my mentor, Mary Morrissey, she says that, that a sailor cannot set sail if they don't know the destination that they're going. Right. Okay. And it, and it's a lot of the time it's because, you know, when we have things like perfectionism or we're trying to control things, it's because we don't have clarity on what we actually want and desire in our lives. And this is where it's so important to keep connecting with our heart space, because this is where the joy lives. This is where our dreams live. And that's why, you know, I, I consider that the gifts that you have discovered over the years and the experiences that you've had, it all, it all has unlocked another gift within you because that magic lives within us. So this is all about becoming the authentic self because what's right for you isn't right for me and vice versa, right? Everybody has their own unique gifts, their own purpose here on this planet we came on this planet for a reason. We did not come onto this planet to eat, sleep, work, be entertained and keep in that cycle that we, that is not life. <laughs> life is constant change. Life is, you know, what love, well, what I'm experiencing now, love and loss. Life is, there's a constant state of, of loss and grief and change and growth happening around us. But are we choosing that? That's the question. Are we choosing that or are we choosing to stay in the container because we're so afraid to step out of it because we don't know what's out there? Yeah, I would love to talk about that a little bit, especially now, right? In this, in this world that we're living in, there's so much division. There's so much pain and suffering and there's a lot of loss too, right? Like we've lost some really great people within the past two years. Um, you know, in, in your opinion, what can people do? Well, I mean, for one, we, we have to let go of the steering wheel. We have to take our hands off the steering wheel because we cannot control. The only thing that we can control and learn to manage is our emotions. And um, this is where education and um, therapy and support systems really come into play because we are not meant to be islands. And um, I will say that to get to where I am, it's taken a village, <laughs> right? I haven't done this on my own. I, have I had to step up? Yeah. But have I had people along the way in my deepest, darkest moments, holding me up, walking me through because I can't necessarily do it on my own in that moment, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yes. I, you just recreated, I, I was having a conversation with, you know, I call him my hunk, my boyfriend. <laughs> and um, it's one of those things that, you know, we were talking about it this past weekend. It's been four years, almost five years since my diagnosis. And it was one of those things that, you know, when I look back, I'm like, I don't know how I could have done it without you, right? I had a lot of people that just stepped up and were there for me in a time that I didn't realize that I needed them. And that's exactly what you, you just recreated. So sometimes, you know, it's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to have people be a support to you. People are extremely generous, but as humans, we need to give them that space to walk into. It, it is vital to our existence that we receive. And, yeah. and that's what you did was you opened yourself to receive and, you know, perhaps before the diagnosis, you being a PA and doing the things that you were doing, you were taking it all on. Yeah, and I got it. I got it. I'm good. I'm good. I don't need you. I'm fine. Right. That whole conversation. Right. And, you know, I and, and vulnerability is not weakness. And vulnerability to me is the most beautiful strength that anybody could ever show. And, um, 
you know, I mean, I, even for myself being vulnerable, coming out of the closet in 2014 and writing in a public article on elephant journal saying I have, and lived with borderline personality disorder. I've still, since healed it, but back then I would, I didn't tell anybody that I had BPD because I was so terrified of people finding me out. I thought that people would just think that I was crazy and the opposite happened. People loved you. Loved you even more for your bravery, right? Your courage. Mm -hmm. We always talk about living courageously here. And that is just such an amazing example of stepping beyond that fear. And like, it allowed you to really find yourself. Yeah. And, and using our voice. And so that's why, you know, these podcasts are so important because, um, you know, whether it's podcasts or writing or, or, you know, however somebody puts themselves out there sharing your story. I mean, I tell people do not hold back from sharing parts of yourself. And I've heard people say, oh, well, you know what? I haven't had the traumatic experiences other, you know, that person has had. So who am I to speak? And I said, because by you sharing something that you've been through, I guarantee that helps someone else. Who cares if it's one person or a million people? It doesn't matter. This is, this is why we're on this planet. It's relationships, period right? Everything else is man-made. We are here to learn how to relation with people. And what that does is that, you know, when we, when we really start to come into our hearts and into ourselves in that process of self-love, self-care and self-healing, we start to, it's almost like, like the way that I see it is like, we're this bubble of beautiful light that's reverberating. And that light just starts to hit other people and then they reverberate. And then it starts to create this beautiful ripple effect. And to me, the only thing that's powerful enough in our, in our existence on this planet, in the universe is love. Love is medicine. It is not easy to get back to it, but it is the medicine because we're either always operating from fear or love. Exactly. 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 Oh, you, you just resonate. You just spoke the words of how I live, right? When I'm in a, in the moment where I need to make a decision or a choice, I like to say a choice, you know, am I, am I choosing fear or am I choosing love right now? Or if I'm not behaving the way that I want to, it's like, okay, well, what, why am I doing this? And so I love that. Like that for everyone listening, like this is the take home today. Like <laughs> to choose, you can't have both, right? No, you, because you can't, you can't have, you can't have trust and fear at the same time. You can't, yeah. you know, you can't have love and fear at the same time. It's one or the other. And the best way that I can tell people, you know, people who question, well, how do you know the difference? Because fear is contractive. Fear yeah. makes you feel small. Yes. Love is expansive. Yeah. Love, love, you start to, you know, it's almost like that flower blooming and you, you, you see the opening, you, you feel your shoulders pull back, you know, your shoulders will hunch forward when you're in fear. So these are little things that you start to notice about yourself. Whoa, I'm in fear. And look, here's the thing. Fear is not a bad thing. Fear is feedback. Fear is telling us, Hey, we're growing right now. And that's okay. It just means that we haven't done something yet, or we don't know how to do something yet. It doesn't, it's, we, we don't want to omit fear period because fear is, is really what helps us on the stepping stone to growth, right? To keep getting us to that next level. And Richard Branson, he's the first one to say, if, if you're, um, if what you're working on, you, you don't fear that, then your dreams aren't big enough. Right. I love that. <laughs> Right. And I'm like, yeah, that's so true. <laughs> and it's true that fear can be very controlling too, right? Like it's how you control people is through fear. Like we've seen that time and time again in history. So I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that I've recognized them myself. And, you know, just like you said, recognize the emotions that you're manifesting. Like your body gives you clues to what's happening and where you're coming from and what's going on. Like your intuition is so important. So I know for me, the second that my heart starts to race and like I get clenched up and, you know, it's a sign for me to be like, okay, what's happening? Just get that awareness. It's like, get that light bulb to go on. So then you're at least in an awareness and not 
just being robotic because of it's something that you've done in the past? Well, the roboticness is the safety is the, the perceived safety, but it's, that's not safe. That, that is actually debilitating to your growth. And if we really observe and look at, um, and look at our growth and our, the results that are happening in our life, it's all happening for a reason. Look, there's, there's a reason why you received the gift that you did. I'm going to call it a gift, the cancer diagnosis. And because it led you to this now moment, right? Yeah. And who's to say that that was part of your blueprint? Could it have been that there were things that, because you were, you were working in a highly stressful career that took a lot of brain power and all of your physical strength, all of it. And it basically compressed you so much that it created an illness in your body, right? So we have to, and this is where we get to take ownership of even our illnesses. And I'm not saying that, you know, bad things don't happen to good people, I, I'm I'm not saying that you know people create necessarily their own, but the circumstances that they're living in, yes, they do create the results in our life. But this is why we work on the mindset. This is why we work on the vibration. And this is why you came out of that and you've created what you've created to this point because you actually saw the gift, the lessons in this. Exactly. You, you didn't give yeah. up. You you yeah. chose you chose to face the fear and keep moving, moving forward through that. Yeah. And, and thank you for acknowledging that because it is 1000% the truth, you know, in my world. And I know that that's true for so many people that after a certain point and after some healing, like you're able to look back and see that. And the other thing too, that is really um, one of the things that I want to kind of add to that is there is a scientific measure that if you look back seven to 10 years in your life from your initial diagnosis, you will see that there is a catalyst in your life. Like you can pinpoint the experience that altered your body, right? Like it is yeah. literally switched your genes to have this event manifest something like cancer. Right? Yeah. I had four lesions on my left breast that I literally could pinpoint different periods of high stress, high emotion within my life that I actually nicknamed them, right? Based on their size, right? It's kind of it's my mechanism of how I deal, but like it, it really is the truth. So for those of you listening, if you have had a catalyst where it's an autoimmune turn on, it's a cancer turn on, right? Look and see what happened because that's a good place to start in your healing journey emotionally. You know, there's a book that I'd like to recommend to people. Um, a book, uh, there's an author named Louise Hay. She's no longer um, physically on this planet, um, but her work was so beautiful. And she wrote this book um, called Heal Your Body. Yeah. Is that what, that's what it's called, right, Lori? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that book fascinates me so much because it really goes into the depths of ailments and their spiritual meanings. And so, you know, she'll, she'll talk about, you know, something that's happening in the liver. Oh, that's anger. That's, that's, this is unprocessed anger that is holding here. And then she creates an affirmation that people can say that will help, you know, that part of the body, but she goes into every part, even every vertebra of, you know, anything that's happening. If you get a cut, if there's, you know, like whether it's a big ailment or a small ailment, it's in that book and it's pretty fascinating. So I highly suggest that for people. Yeah. And it's an easier read. So if people are like, Oh God, another book. No, it's actually well, well, super worth tiny. It. Yeah. Super it's tiny. Perfect. And it's like a little Bible to me. Cause sometimes, you know, if somebody's telling me something, I'm like, hang on, let me get my book. Cause I want to, I want to just observe to see, and then I'll mention something to them because as you know, a coach and a guide, I can, you know, help them navigate this. And then we can start to, and they're like, Oh my God, oh, now I know. And then we can start talking it back to right. where this issue may have started. Yeah, I'd love that. I'd mm -hmm. love that. Thank you for who you are in this on um, this planet, in this world, and for 
just you being you and finding your true authentic self because you are supporting so many people in their journey called life. Uh, so I would love to know or share with others, how can people find you? Well, you can definitely find me on, on the socials. Um, I'm, I'm on, um, my website's called bridge the love.com. Um, so you can check me out there. I have a free ebook called 20 ways of being self, um, in self love on, on that website. Um, and, uh, I have a personal Facebook group that I have called the self love tribe. So you can find me on Facebook. And of course you can find me on Instagram at Denise Michelle XOXO. And I just, I put a lot of free content out there and just sharing little interesting tidbits of information with people, um, on, and it's everything self love, self care, self healing. So this is, this is my wheelhouse. I have a lot of fun with it. Um, some of it is deep and some of it is really light and fluffy and yeah, I'm just like, Hey, let's play. Let's be on the journey. I love it. I love it. Thank you again for taking the time today, for sharing your wisdom and for just being of service to others. My pleasure.